whenever my wife buys a cool tea towel like this one, I immediately think, can I make this myself? So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this style of design. And you could put it on a t-shirt or your own tea towel, and it's pretty easy to do, and it's completely free. So let's get started right meow. Okay, so let's jump into Inkscape, which is the software that we'll be using today. And if you've never seen Inkscape before, it's pretty cool. It's totally free. You can just go to the page in the description here. And there's links on the left. There's a menu on the top. There's menu on the right. And there's like a color palette on the bottom, which is pretty cool. You can change stuff around. But all we're going to be doing really is just importing a silhouette and then just writing some text on top of it. It's actually really easy to do. So I'm just going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to pull my silhouette in. So I've already downloaded off of the internet a silhouette file. And it's just going to ask me, hey, do you want to import this SVG image type as an editable object? And I'll say yes. I'll click OK. And now it's going to give me my kitty cat picture. Now it's not the exact same as the tea towel that we saw in the opening, but that's okay. I'm going to make my own here. And the process is the same regardless of the image that you're using or even the text that you're using. It's the same general design uh, process. So here's my image. Okay, it's kitty cat and it's a vector. So that means if I click on the left hand side, there's these little nodes, edit path by node. And if I hover over the cat now, if actually if I click on it, you'll see these vectors pop up. So when I zoom in, you can see these are all individual nodes and that's what makes up a vector. So if I wanted to change it, I could. I could actually change the way this looks by just moving the node around or this little like it looks like a little barbell, I could actually change this too. So this is like a mathematical formula on how this image looks. So you can make him have a bump or maybe he's got some sort of medical condition. Anyway, I'm just going to go edit undo, move nodes, and I'll do undo and I'll do undo and I'll just bring it back to the beginning here. So I'm just going to go back and there's my individual picture. Okay, now to zoom in, you can either do zoom, view and then zoom in, or I'm just using my mouse and I'm holding down the control key and I'm using the scroll wheel. So I'm scrolling in with the, control, with the control button down and the scroll wheel, or I can also scroll out. The other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to make the background, instead of it being white, because I'm going to be using white text, I'm actually going to make the background clear and it's really easy to do that. I just go to file, document properties. And then from here inside document properties, there's this little checkerboard background here and I'll just click that. What that's going to do now is just make the background uh, like clear. So if I create white text, you'll be able to see it because the background's no longer white. So I'm just going to move cat here into the middle of my page. And now I've got my palette here that I'm going to work on. So I'm just going to zoom in here quite big just so I can use the cat's body. I'm going to write text now on top of the cat's body. To write text is really easy to do. On the left hand side there's a little A and if I hover over any of these buttons you can see what it says. And I'm hovering over the A now and it says create and edit text object. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to type in just a word. I'm going to create like a text box and I'm going to type in a word and I'm going to say meow. That's going to be my word. So I'm going to type in meow, M-E-O-W. Now I'm using text that I don't really want to keep. So I'm just going to click inside that little box there and highlight it just using control A. And I'm just going to run down the different types of text that I want to use. I've got a ton of texts, a ton of different fonts on my computer. So I'm just going to go up to the one that I want to use. Okay, so that's the one I'm going to use. It's called Lemonade Stand for what it's worth. So this is my text. Now it's black, so if I move it over the cat, you won't be able to see it, but that's okay. I'm just going to go here to the bottom and I can click the white button and that will change my text to white. Whatever color I click, that's going to change the text color. Actually, that neon blue looks pretty cool, but I'm going to just leave it as white. So I'm going to click on white and then I'm just going to move the text down on top of the cat. Okay. So now I can do anything I want with this text. If I want to stretch it, I can stretch it. If I want to increase the size up here, I can increase the size up here. I can do anything I want with it. It's really easy to make a vector out of a word. All you do is you click on the word. So now the word is selected and then you go up to path 
and you say object to path. And what that does is it turns this from text into a picture of text, into a vector of text. And we can see now when I click on the little nodes, this is now a vector. Each individual letter is now its own vector, meaning I could go into the O, for example, and I could change the way it looks if I wanted to make a change. I don't want to, so I'll click Edit Undo. The other thing you can do as well is, I'll just change this here so you can see the whole word. I can click on the actual word itself, and if I go into Edit Nodes, let's say I just want to select just the O. I'll select Edit by Nodes. I'll select just the O, and then I'll go back to the arrow. Now I've only got the O selected. I can make the O bigger if I want, or fatter if I want. I can do anything I want with it. So I can change the individual letters. I can even move it if I want. So let's say I want to just move the W. Select the nodes, select the W, and now I can move this if I want to make it a bit wider. So I could make it look like that, for example. Go back here, select just the O. Let's say I want to make the O a bit higher. And again, I'm just picking this stuff at random just to show it off. This might not look that great when it's done. Now I'll select the E and I'll make that a bit fatter, let's say, like that. And now I'll select the M and now I'll move the M and I'll make that a bit fatter as well. So that's how you make like really wonky looking font rather than having to worry about having a bunch of different typefaces and all that stuff. So from here, I'm just going to enter in more text. I'm actually just going to speed up the video and I'll enter in, let's get the party started, right meow. Okay, so I've got all the text created and I've actually noticed here where it says let's, the apostrophe, the type of font I'm using, it doesn't have an apostrophe built in. So you may have to sometimes just use a different font that has an apostrophe built in. So I'm just gonna use, for example, one that's close to Lemonade Stand. It's just called Lemon Mint. And I'm just gonna use that. So I've got the apostrophe there. You might have to sometimes just use workarounds like that. So there's my little thingy. I'm gonna move it on over and I can just put it in there like that. So there we go. So now I'm gonna just modify where this all goes. So I'm gonna select the let's, I'm gonna go path, object to path, and now I'm just gonna work this in to try to get it to fit a little more into the rump here of the cat. So I'm gonna select the L, and then I'm just gonna move the L perhaps up a tiny bit. Whoops, not the cat, I wanna move the L. So I'm gonna select the L, there we go and then I'll move it maybe up here, for example. Now I could stretch it, so I'm gonna to try to stretch it a little bit there. And the nice thing about a vector is, look at how clean it is when I stretch it. There's no like pixelation on it, so that's pretty cool. Same thing here now with the E. I'll select the E, and now I'll move the E and make it perhaps a bit fatter. So you could just modify it to make it a little more hand-drawn. Again, it's total personal preference here. I'll select the T. I'll move the T like that. And then now I don't need to do anything special here with this apostrophe because it's on its own. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'll select the S. And the S now sits like that, for example. So I can be very, very specific about how I want the individual text to go for the cat. So now I'm just gonna adjust the text on all of this as well. Again, I'll just do a time lapse so you can see how it all looks. Okay, so that took me some time, but it's worth it because I've got all the letters all lined up now. And now I can just simply export this to a file and I can 
use this on a t-shirt or a coffee mug or an art print, that sort of thing. So to export this, it's pretty easy to do. On the right hand side, there's a menu and you can see there's a little arrow going into the document and a little arrow going out of the document. Well, we want the arrow going out of the document. So I'm going to click on that. It says export this document or a selection as a PNG. And that's what we want is a PNG. So when I click on that, the little export PNG comes up. Now, the reason I want it as a PNG is because I want the background to be transparent. I don't want to have a bunch of white on this page. So I'm just going to export just this image. Now I can make this just the page so I can export the entire page. That would be this whole page, including the, the, all the white space up top. I can export the drawing. I can export the selection or I can export custom. Now I'm going to export the selection and it's a really easy way to do this. So I'm going to click selection and now it's going to give me the size of my drawing, which is 2593 by 2276 at 400 DPI. But let's say I wanted to make this way bigger. Okay. Really easy way to do it. Go up to edit and then you're going to see select all, but go one below. Select all in all layers. You select that. Now everything is selected in every layer, whether it's text, whether it's the apostrophe, I've got a, you know, extra object selected. Now I can make this quite a bit bigger by simply dragging this out. Now I could drag it, but it's going to stretch it. So I don't want to do that. Okay. Instead, I'm going to hold down the control key and I can stretch it, but I can make it exactly the same ratio. So now look at how big my design is. 7130 by 6258 at 400 DPI. I can even zoom out and make it even larger. 11,000 by 9776. So I typically will do like the biggest size around 10,000 when I'm making really large images for posters and that sort of thing. And because this is a vector, it's extremely clean as far as the actual picture goes. So that's what I'm going to export is this selection. I've selected everything in all layers and now I can export my file as a PNG file. So I'm going to click this export as button to export my actual file and put it in a location of my choosing. So now I've got it saving here and under cat design big is what I'm calling it. Now here's the important part. I've selected where to export it as I still need to export it. So I'm going to click this export button and you'll see now it says export in progress. It could take a while depending on how much juice your computer has and how big the design is. This is a quite a large design, but I've worked on really complicated, large pictures. It can take upwards of sometimes even a minute to export because it's so large and so uh, detailed. So now I've exported my image. So now I can put this on a t-shirt, on a coffee mug. So the remainder of this video will be a few different options just to brainstorm to show you how this looks on apparel and on a print. So I hope you found that helpful. As always, feel free to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment. Always happy to hear from you. Thank you so, so much for watching.